Welcome to the 2020 celebration of goodness and the 20th anniversary of the Sam Miller Goodness Awards coming to you from Kineland, USA. I'm your host, Eleanor Hayes. This year's recipients of the Sam Miller Goodness Award and the Arnold R. Pinckney Award for Civic Leadership have a rich history of doing good for others. And in these trying times, they have stepped up in extraordinary ways to help our community. More about these amazing people and a very special musical guest coming up. But first, a word from our Values in Action Project Love co-founder and CEO, Stuart Musinski. Just seven short months ago, few if any of us could have imagined where our country would be at at this moment. For many of us, those seven months feel like seven years as the loss and struggle continue with no end in sight. But out of tragedy and unrest, we have seen people rise up and heroes emerge. And these are the people Cleveland businessman and philanthropist Sam Miller wanted to honor when he created the Celebration of Goodness Awards 20 years ago. So it's our honor to continue the legacy of this great Cleveland legend. I saw Sam Miller as the embodiment of all that uh, humans do for others. Um, his legacy will live on as an example of how you treat people and organizations big and small, how you exemplify the sorts of things that uh, really do make a difference in uh, making our community a better place. Uh, Sam has been a wonderful example uh, that we will not forget. The Goodness Award is named after him for good reason, because he was a man of vision who saw things and wanted to get them done and then set about making things happen. As they give the Sam Miller Goodness Award, it recognizes both his contributions and the way that people have taken up the mantle that he that he set out for all of us by continuing to do the, the good work that the community needs. Anyone who receives the Sam Miller Award uh, has to be very, very grateful and, and very honored that your name somehow gets associated with Sam Miller's. Anytime you're mentioned in the same sentence with a, a great person like uh, Sam Miller, uh, it's always a good thing. You know, this award exemplifies uh, to me that there are people out there that uh, notice some of the things that you do in the community and uh, equate that to uh, some of the good things that need to be completed in a community. This award uh, is a very important award because it really gives people a focus as to what is recognized as outstanding leadership in the community. People look at that being recognized with the Sam Miller Goodness Award is something to strive for. The Sam Miller Goodness Award is obviously a great honor. Sam Miller was one of Cleveland's treasures. Sam was a major contributor to the growth of Cleveland, the communities and the surrounding area. And anybody that knew him was fortunate for that experience. His legacy uh, is not only Project Love, which is wonderful, but a number of things in Cleveland, so many I couldn't even count them all. But that's why this award is so special to me because it signifies what Sam Miller meant to this community. The Sam Miller Goodness Award was an indescribable honor. It was also encouragement that those who commit themselves with all of their imperfections to love, justice, and reconciliation do not work in vain. Hopefully, uh, giving this award to significant people in the community will help raise the awareness in the community of the need for that kind of interest in young people and providing them with values that will be so necessary for a meaningful life. The Sam Miller Award, what does it mean for community? It means that we all, we all should do our best. We have an inscription on the wall at the Holocaust Memorial 
uh, down at the State House that says, if you save one life, you may have changed the world. And I happen to believe that. Giving a goodness award is like saying, I'm for motherhood and apple pie. Giving a goodness award in the name of Sam Miller makes it a totally different award. Because giving a goodness award by Sam Miller is an indication as to how one human being's goodness can affect so many people. From everyday people to heads of state across faiths and ethnicities, Sam Miller and Arnold Pinckney promoted a culture of kindness throughout Cleveland. In the spirit of these great men and their visions, Values in Action is launching an initiative to transform their beloved city of Cleveland into Kindland, the kindest city in America. Now, more than ever, we need to show the world what it can be like to live in a city of kindness. Lately, it feels like the world is upside down, and what we once saw as the bedrock of our way of life seems to be crumbling beneath our feet. Words muffle behind barriers for protection, facial expressions hidden behind a mask, the touch of love friendship, reassurance, and consolation abandoned by necessity. And in the midst of this isolation, this monster we have struggled for so long to put behind us has revealed itself in all its ugliness as still very much alive. The impact of these events is of a magnitude that will surely reshape our world. And right now, it has left a hole in our humanity that can seem impossible to fill. But what if there was a place where despite our circumstances, despite our differences, we could feel a sense of togetherness and common purpose? A place where instead of guessing what's going on behind a mask, we could feel with confidence there is a smile and a kind word waiting for us? What if each day we could wake up with a feeling of optimism that though these are troubled times, we're not alone? but all in this together. What if this place was right here in our hometown? Welcome to Kindland, the kindness city in America. We know the world is going to be a different place on the other side of this crisis, but what it looks like depends on us. There are many different seeds we can plant to grow this new world. If we choose the seeds of anger, resentment, and exclusion, we'll create a toxic environment where nothing can truly thrive. But if we plant the seeds of kindness, a different world emerges, a world of infinite possibility where we all can flourish. The goal of the Kind Land Initiative is to shine a light on the acts of kindness that happen every day in our community acts that inspire and motivate us to generate our own brand of kindness and pay it forward. I'm Leon Bibb, and in my many years of broadcasting, I have told the stories of countless acts of kindness, people who move beyond personal needs, fears, and perceived limitations to lend a hand, comfort, and encourage others, and do the right thing. And in my investigation of this phenomenon, I have found that these people are ultimately the happiest group in our society. Because an act of kindness is the most fulfilling thing one can do. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the water and it will come back tenfold. This is the true power of kindness. Because like its evil twin, kindness is infectious, spreads quickly, and can transform a community. I urge you all to not only plant the seeds of kindness in your community, but to share your story of kindness and the other stories you have heard at hashtag KindLand. Together we can create a groundswell and show the world that KindLand is not just in our state, it's a state of mind. It's not just in this place, it's a place in your heart. I'm Leon Bibb, a citizen of KindLand, 
And I invite you to join me in this world-changing endeavor by taking the kindness pledge at the address below. Together, we can do this. Kindness can transform a city, a state, a country, and even the world. But in these challenging times, it takes a special brand of kindness to meet the needs of our community. People willing to give their time, their treasure, and even to put themselves in harm's way to save others. These individuals, institutions, and companies have quietly and without fanfare risen to the challenge of the day. Today, we honor these heroes behind the scenes whose continued acts of kindness and selflessness have inspired us all. One of the reasons I wanted to be a police officer, obviously, is to help people and to, you know, have an effect on uh, my, our community. Uh, when I get up in the morning, I, I think about my oath and I think about where, uh, you know, my day will go and never sure about how it's going to start or end, but I ultimately uh, work for a higher purpose. Since the pandemic has started, uh, our whole patrol division has altered its behavior uh, in regards to dealing with it, how we uh, respond to calls, how our officers deal with calls. Uh, how we actually even just patrol due to the fact that a number of our businesses are empty and you know, we need to spend more time in the, because there's no one to call us if there's a problem. I don't look at myself as a hero, I look at myself as a person that uh, gives a little bit of himself every day to uh, and takes time away from his personal life, family, you know, kids uh, to uh, give back to the community. I am proud to be part of such a resilient profession as an educator. When the call to action was made due to COVID-19, I watched educators rise to the occasion and spend much time outside of their teaching to find new and innovative ways to reach out to students and keep learning consistent. We designed our prayer services to keep our community together virtually so that we can make sure that we were able to do that and share our faith life together. I think in order for us to turn a corner in our society today, we really need to stop and think about the person next to us. We have to really understand that as a community, we are one together. We're either going to succeed or we're going to fail together. Reach out to the people around you to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe and those in your community so that we can all get through this together. What drives me here every day is just the love that I have and the passion I have for cooking for the guests that I serve. I call them all my babies. Some of them are homeless, a lot of them live in the shelters. I'm glad that I can be that person to be here for them. I used to be one of them. I used to be one of our guests many years ago. And I always tell myself, somebody prayed for me, so you can do this. That's my motto, cooking with love. Everything I do for the Cosgrove Center for our guests is with love, it's from the heart. COVID has really kind of changed my total operation. I'm used to feeding kids within the schools, feeding them hot meals, one meal at a time, where now it's like I'm feeding them out the back door and you know there's all 200 people in their cars waiting for us to uh, give them bulk frozen items in which they could cook these meals up at home. So COVID has kind of really changed our, our means of service completely. My back hurts. <laughs> My feet are aching, but um, you know what? It is a very rewarding job. Um, we get many thank yous all the time from people in line. And um, again, our, our community needs us. And um, I'm privileged enough to be able to um, help the community. And with great partners like the Cleveland Food Bank, we're able to do so. My number one job is to be a person's doctor. And that doesn't matter what kind of illness they're facing. So when COVID came around, this has just been another aspect of me being there for people in sickness and in health, to provide care, to provide comfort. So I get up every day to go to work, just so I can care for those people who really need me. Sometimes people have an emergency, and although that may not be my emergency, it's their emergency. And when they show up to our doors, I want to be there to help them. We continue to need people to step up in this crisis and help out in any way that they can. So I encourage everybody to get involved, to do whatever they can, and to help us make it through this crisis. When I go home at the end of the day, my objective is to know that I've done my best and I've tried my hardest 
for those people who are counting on me. I do it because it is so much fun. I enjoy it. It's one of the best things I've done in this life. Back in May, unfortunately, they had to stop all the volunteers from coming in, so we were uh, replaced by the National Guard. However, within the last month or so, they have started letting the volunteers come back in, and at this point, we have been packing lunches for the children and making backpacks for them for the weekend stays. It is hard work, but it is so much fun, and you meet so many different people in so many different walks of life. It's a wonderful experience. I recommend it to anybody. I've been volunteering like seven days a week for the last 12 years. We all have to have food, and there are many people that don't, who can't get the food or can't buy food, so we, we helping out delivering the food for those that need it. I was diagnosed in 2018 with pancreatic cancer, and I was in the hospital for 10 days, came out, I was home for two weeks, and after that, I was back at the food bank. Well, I don't really look at myself as a hero. I just look at myself as just someone helping those in need that couldn't help themselves. The overwhelming response by so many to lend a hand of kindness to others in this pandemic and struggle for equality speaks volumes about the real nature of humanity. In reality, we are not a divided nation driven by fear and resentment, but a nation of common values. We are all capable of acting for the greater good. When we model goodness done on our behalf, the space we are told separates us begins to disappear. When we seek to find the goodness in others, we find the goodness in ourselves. The Sam Miller Goodness Awards shine a light on these individuals and companies, not for the purpose of showering them in accolades. The good they do is always thanks enough for these people, but it's an opportunity to show others the type of person they can be when they set aside what they've been told divides us for goodness sake. Here are the recipients of this year's Sam Miller Goodness Awards. His ability to reach across the aisle and work together for the greater good has earned Rob Portman the status of fourth most bipartisan member of the U.S. Senate. His work with the Bipartisan Payroll Protection Program and other legislation has helped countless Americans keep their jobs by sustaining their employers' businesses during the COVID crisis. He continues to be a driving force for good as he works on other legislation to help Americans in these difficult times and beyond. For placing the well-being of all over party and politics, we present Senator Rob Portman with the Sam Miller Goodness Award. I am particularly honored to be able to make this presentation on behalf of Rob Portman. Rob and Sam Miller were dear friends, and Sam thought the world of Rob, and I know this would be especially meaningful for Sam. Rob was elected to represent Ohio in the U.S. Senate in 2010. He won re-election in 2016, winning 84 of Ohio's 88 counties. Rob and his family own the oldest continuously operating business in Ohio, the Golden Lamb Inn in Warren County. During his career, Rob has served in many capacities as a U.S. representative, as well as U.S. trade representative and director of office management and budget for George W. Bush administration. Rob has fought to pass policies that allow all Ohioans to achieve their God-given potential. From founding Prevention First, an anti-addiction nonprofit based in Cincinnati, to spearheading the push to pass landmark addiction response legislation, like his Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, 
and his Anti-Drug Trafficking Stop Act. Rob has been a leader in working to turn the tide of addiction in our country. During his time in the U.S. House of Representatives, Rob teamed with our great leader, the late Stephanie Tubbs-Jones, to author the landmark Second Chack Act to provide federal funds to re-entry programs for incarcerated individuals. As co-chair of the Senate Human Trafficking Caucus, Rob has also been a leader in cracking down on the sex trafficking industry. Notably, he authored the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act in 2018, which helped to put an end to the use of online classified sites as a venue for traffickers. Rob has worked hard to pass policies aimed at promoting conservation and stewardship of our environment and our public land. And just recently, Rob's landmark Restore Our Parks Act to fund critical repairs at our national park sites passed Congress with bipartisan support. Rob believes that a bipartisan approach is the best way to solve problems. He was recently named as one of the top five most bipartisan senators. For Rob's lifelong dedication to making our country state and communities places of kind goodness, he is receiving the Sam Miller Goodness Award. It is well deserved be given to a fine human being and great friend of all of us who know him. Congratulations. Hi, this is U.S. Senator Rob Portman. I'm really honored to be receiving the Sam Miller Goodness Award at this year's Celebration of Goodness Luncheon. I'm sorry we couldn't be together in person to celebrate this, but I'm thankful for the Values and Action Foundation's continued dedication to building kinder communities during this difficult time. I was among many who were honored to call Sam Miller a friend. From his humble beginnings, he made lots of friends as he spread his goodwill, his generosity, and his philanthropy around the community he loved so much. Sam's gestures were both grand and small. Many knew of Sam's grand generosity to the Cleveland Clinic or the Jewish National Fund or other great causes, but what I remember about my meetings with Sam was the small gestures. Rarely could I leave without a little gift. A tie he would insist I choose from his ample personal collection was usually what he would do. By the way, the next time I'd see him, I would have to try to remember which tie it was so that I could wear it. But for him, that was part of being good. That was part of the goodness. We face our share of challenges as a country right now, let's face it, between the economic and health care crises brought about by the coronavirus pandemic and the difficult but necessary conversation we're having on racial disparities in our country today. Communities across America are being tested. It's time like these that it's more critical than ever for us to come together and remember that goodness and kindness and compassion can be powerful forces for good. In the Portman family, we have a motto that I first learned from my grandfather. He would sign all his notes to me with the saying, be ever kind and true. My three kids have had to live with me, ending a lot of my texts to them saying the same words, and sometimes the abbreviation, be cat, be ever kind and true. There are all things, a lot of things that we can do to make this world a kinder place. Lend a helping hand to a neighbor, volunteer at a food bank, donate blood, so many other things we can do with these small gestures to have a positive impact that grows in so many ways. In public service, we can try to pass legislation that helps spread kindness throughout our communities. Examples would be addressing the addiction crisis in our country, helping individuals re-enter society to get the second chance they deserve, cracking down on the scourge of sex trafficking that has had such a devastating impact on women and children across Ohio and our country, and much more. We owe it to ourselves and to each other to try to make the world a better place every single day. Again, I'm honored to receive this award because it represents that obligation we have as neighbors to be kind to one another goodness. Thank you again for this honor, and Godspeed.
From 1990 to 2002, former Mayor Michael White oversaw the beginning of Cleveland's renaissance through his leadership. His administration brought a Rust Belt town whose glorious past had been long forgotten back into national prominence. As the Neighborhood Renewal Council to the Mandel Foundation and the Program Director for the Neighborhood Leadership Development Program, he continues to serve our community with leadership and distinction. This political and business force turned gentleman farmer in Vitney continues to lend his unique style and leadership to all he touches. For his valued contributions and his heart for community, we present Michael White with the Sam Miller Goodness Award. Former Mayor of Cleveland, Michael Reed White, is a man who has proven his love to the city of Cleveland. Under his leadership, the ashes of the Huff neighborhood became the foundation for new homes for African Americans. Cleveland, which was known as the mistake on the lake, was known then to become the comeback city and an all-American city. Downtown saw new development as Gateway was one of our projects and the Cleveland Cavaliers were brought back to downtown with their own arena. The Cleveland Indians also had their own stadium. With the moving of the Browns, Mayor White fought for a new team, built a new stadium, made sure that the team had the same name, and made sure that Cleveland had an NFL team. Cleveland became a new renaissance city under his leadership as Cleveland Clinic and University Hospitals began to expand. He was the leader which Cleveland needed for safety and development. He will go down in Cleveland history as one of the greatest leaders and mayors which Cleveland has ever known. And for this reason, Michael R. White is receiving the Sam Miller Goodness Award because of his lifelong dedication to goodness and leadership in Cleveland's urban core. Unfortunately, Mayor White is not available to receive the Sam Miller Goodness Award. He did share his remarks that I will read next. Sam Miller, in multiple ways, was an extraordinary human being on many levels. While we knew him in Cleveland and are familiar with his contributions to our community, his contributions are felt far beyond our borders. Sam's greatest contribution is that with every word he uttered and every step he took, he cajoled, urged, and challenged us all to be better human beings and to act from a concern for the least of us. Whether it was contributing to poor school children, burying deceased persons he did not know, or seeking peace among our fellow citizens when tensions were raw, Sam was always there to do many times what others would not do. While I am humbled to receive an award in his name, I in no way feel I measure up to the legacy and example he left behind, but I try every day to be that better human being Sam wanted us all to be. Since 1904, the Hebrew Free Loan Association has been providing businesses and individuals with no interest loans that have greatly enriched the communities in which they serve. In the tradition of helping others, they have stepped up during the COVID crisis to offer free loans to those impacted in this time of great need. For all of the good they have done and continue to do for the community, we present the Hebrew Free Loan Association of Northeast Ohio with the Sam Miller Goodness Award. Sam Miller shared with HFLA that in the early 20th century, his father was a rag peddler in Cleveland and he needed a horse to drive the cart in which he had his goods which were peddled door to door. 
He was so poor that he could only afford a blind horse, which was purchased from an interest-free loan from Hebrew Free Loan Association. For over 116 years, HFLA has been providing interest-free loans throughout Northeast Ohio to individuals and business owners of all races, religions, ethnicities, and backgrounds. These loans have gone to start businesses, fund education, and take care of family and health needs. They have been a backstop and a sliver of hope for many. For promoting goodness, respect, hope, and love throughout Cleveland, Hebrew Free Loan Association of Northeast Ohio is receiving the Sam Miller Goodness Award. Thank you to the board and everyone at the Values in Action Foundation for awarding HFLA of Northeast Ohio the 2020 Samuel Miller Goodness Award. We need goodness in our world more than ever. Overlapping economic, racial, and health crises have laid bare the cracks in our safety net systems. HFLA is a frontline support system for so many in this region who are struggling with economic hardships. We see more hardships each day in the form of panicked calls from needy individuals. And it looks like things will get worse before they get better. With more than 1 million lent out to our community through zero interest loans, HFLA helps Northeast Ohioans overcome unexpected financial hurdles, achieve their educational pursuits, and realize their dream businesses. Social and economic justice are Jewish values, values that underpin our mission and have for 116 years. We help wherever there is need. Today, the majority of our zero interest loans are to borrowers in communities of color. To me, when we speak of kindness and goodness, these are not simply personal qualities incumbent upon each of us to embody. Kindness and goodness must inspire action. The turbulent times we are experiencing as a nation, COVID-19, racial and economic inequity, must be met with justice inspired by the kindness and goodness in all our hearts. If each of us took upon ourselves both the aspiration and obligation to be more kind and good, to allow kindness to inspire actions towards social justice and helping those in need, we could transform our region, our country, and indeed the world. Thank you. It's been inspiring to hear the stories of these exceptional people, and there are more to come. But first, we'd like to take just a moment to tell you about Values in Action, an organization that has been helping mold the goodness recipients of tomorrow. For over a quarter of a century, they have pioneered the social emotional learning programs that have become the foundation for successful education throughout the country. To date, Project Love, Values and Action programs have positively impacted the lives of over 875,000 students nationwide and laid a foundation for their success. With the generosity of people like you, we will continue to build a better future for us all. Please consider becoming a Project Love supporter and help us continue to make a better world, one child at a time. Our governor calls her the love of his life and the rock of their family. Ohio schools call her a champion for education. For instance, childhood, Fran and Mike DeWine have worked side by side to make Ohio a better place for all its citizens. And like a slice of the delicious pie she bakes for their annual ice cream socials, Fran is an invaluable piece of what makes the DeWine team work. In his inaugural speech, Mike said, I will not be governor without her. For being a driving force for the good of Ohio and a true example of what strong family values can do. When applied to governing, we present Fran DeWine with the Sam Miller Goodness Award. First Lady Fran DeWine understands kindness. She is passionate about helping people, especially children. 
She studied home economics and has been teaching these skills her entire life to her own children, grandchildren, and friends, and to children all over the state through cooking demonstrations at the fair and storybook time at libraries. Since the 1990s, some of Mrs. DeWine's most cherished work has been supporting children in the Becky DeWine School, located in Haiti's Site Soleil. The school began as a class of kindergartners and now feeds and educates more than 5,000 K-12 children in eight campuses. Most recently, Mrs. DeWine brought her passions, particularly for children and women's issues, into her role as First Lady. Passionate about issues related to children's hunger and nutrition, she has raised money and awareness for Ohio's food banks and organizations, like the Children's Hunger Alliance, and has worked with the Ohio Department of Education and the Ohio Department of Agriculture to better understand the Summer Food Service Program and the School Breakfast Program. Fran believes every mom wants to be a better mom, no matter their circumstances. She is raising awareness and funds for Moms-to-Be, a prenatal and first year of life educational course in Columbus, and championed the expansion of this nonprofit to Dayton. She also hosted a baby shower for Ohio military Moms-to-Be. First Lady Fran DeWine is a champion for early childhood education and literacy. She first learned about Dolly Parton's Imagination Library when her grandchildren began receiving a free, age-appropriate book each month through the mail. Mrs. DeWine wanted every child in the state to have that same reading opportunity, which inspired the launch of the Ohio Governor's Imagination Library. In August 2019, 93,483 children were enrolled, and as of August 1, 2020, 190,810 children are now enrolled and receiving books each month, growing their love for reading. For all these reasons, First Lady Fran DeWine is receiving the Sam Miller Goodness Award. Thank you. It is a great honor to receive this award that is in the name of one of the kindest and most compassionate people I have ever known, Sam Miller. One of the most important things that we can teach our children is to be kind. Children are the most important investment in our future that we can make. As First Lady, I have focused my efforts on bringing Dolly Parton's Imagination Library to all children in Ohio. I love children's books and I think they are so important because they have themes of inspiration, imagination, and they often tell the stories of characters learning about kindness. Children who are kind and empathetic will grow up to be leaders who will make a, the world a better place. Thank you again. I am truly honored. Feeding people in need has always been an imperative for any society. It is the foundation by which we ensure productive citizens. To succeed in the workforce, education, or any other place in society, we must start with making sure people are nourished. The Cleveland Food Bank is the largest hunger relief organization in Northeast Ohio, and during the COVID crisis, CEO Kristen Wurzocha and the Food Bank have stepped up in extraordinary ways to ensure those in need have food on their tables. For the good food they serve and the good people that continue to prepare and distribute this food, in spite of the obstacles created by the COVID crisis, we honor CEO Kristen Rosocha and the Cleveland Food Bank with the Arnold R. Pinckney Award for Civic Leadership. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank has been one of the great safety nets of Northeast Ohio for 40 years. During the COVID-19 crisis, Kristen and her team experienced a tsunami of need from families experiencing unemployment. Many for the first time, individuals already lacking food and other essentials, and Cleveland's most hungry and vulnerable populations, especially children and seniors. Kristen and her team have mobilized additional resources for increased funding, volunteers, and support throughout the community to keep up with the increased demand. Since March, members of the Ohio National Guard and staff members have braved during their jobs on the front lines of the virus, while many members of our community were quarantined in their homes. They have delivered their product and service with kindness, compassion, and smiles. 
While they have mobilized in this critical time of need, they are also a longtime community resource and backstop against hunger and poverty, providing more than 47 million pounds of food last year to 1,000 nonprofit program partners. This happens day in and day out every single year. A prominent professor once said, food is love, food brings people together. For bringing people together in the spirit of community, kindness, civic leadership, and love, Kristen Warzoka and the Greater Cleveland Food Bank are receiving the Arnold R. Pinckney Award for Civic Leadership. It's an honor to be with you today to accept the Arnold R. Pinckney Award for Civic Leadership on behalf of the board, the staff, and our many community partners at the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. We are so thrilled to join the ranks of many other community leaders and organizations who have been honored by the Values in Action Foundation over the years, including the other honorees today, who are all friends and supporters of the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. Times of crisis often bring the right people together, and that has never been more the case than right now in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic impact. I have never in my 20 years at the food bank seen need like this. I have also never seen our community respond like this. It is truly kindness in action. May we all be inspired by Arnold Pinckney and work every day to make our community a better, healthier, more equitable place for all. Thank you. This year we're adding and announcing a new award to our celebration of goodness, the Mikey George Kindlin Award. Mikey George was the first mainstream Down Syndrome student at St. Edward High School in Cleveland. He exuded a kindness, enthusiasm, love, and a zest for life that was truly transformative for his school and his community. And through his inspiration, the nonprofit Awakening Angels was born, which currently funds biomedical research, educational initiatives, and social programs aimed at improving the quality of life for those affected by Down syndrome, autism, and developmental disabilities. And though Mikey passed away in 2019 from leukemia, his example of kindness continues to impact all those whose lives he touched. His memory stands as the epitome of Kindland and the kind of community Cleveland can become if we put love and kindness front and center as our dominant core values. For the kindness he fostered and the example he set, we award Mikey George's family a posthumous Sam Miller Goodness Award in Mikey's name and also dedicate the Mikey George Kindlin Award to be given out every year as a fitting tribute to the legacy of this exceptional young man. We want to thank all our viewers, our team at Values in Action, and loyal supporters for making this year's Goodness Awards possible. Thank you for the dedication, the commitment, the hard work, and most of all, for the love. On that note, here's our friend John Legend with a final message. Hey everybody, it's John Legend here. My brother asked me to come and talk to you about love. Love can change the world. Of course, we should love our families and our close friends, but there are 7 billion other people out there, 7 billion strangers. I want you to consider what it means to love them too. What does it mean to love people we don't know? To see the value in every single person's life, honoring every life lost to this horrible virus, whether you knew them or not, whether they're here in the United States or across the world. You have to allow people to love you and you have to love them back. And fear is really the opposite of love. It's not a coincidence that when we talk about bigotry, we often talk in terms of fear. Homophobia, xenophobia. Fear is what blinds us. Fear is corrosive. Fear makes us hold back. It whispers to us, tells us that we'll fail. It tells us that our differences are too much to overcome. Fear locks us in place. It starts fights. It causes wars. Don't hold back. Loving means being ready to give freely and openly. 
and being ready to risk something, risking pain, risking disappointment, conquering your fears and becoming anew. So let's all decide to go all in on love. Let's love our friends. Let's love our neighbors. Let's love all of those folks that we don't even know. Let's love one another. Today, the Love One Another Foundation and Values in Action Project Love are launching the Just Be Kind initiative dedicated to making Cleveland a city known for kindness. To make a commitment of change, go to Values in Action website and become a part of the movement by reporting acts of kindness and sign up to receive your passport to Kindland. Thank you, and may acts of love and kindness be a part of your purpose. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd repeatedly told the officers that he could not breathe. On February 23rd, my son, Ahmaud Aubrey, went out for a job. Newly released video shows the aftermath of the police killing of Breonna Taylor in Louisville. <laughs> But the Floyd name still lives on. Hey, Tavon, it's your mom. I was just calling to check up on you, making sure you're doing okay. I also wanted to remind you, you can only love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're protecting your mind. All right, love you. Bye. For my brother. Love one another. Oh.